Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. You can have your seats. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a blessed day indeed. He is risen. Let's just go ahead and get this going. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. It says, I gave you the message that I received. I told you the most important truths, that Christ died for our sins, as the scriptures say. That he was buried and raised to life on the third day, as the scriptures say. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the 12 apostles. After that, Christ appeared to more than 500 other believers at the same time. Most of them are still living today, but some have died. Then he appeared to James and later to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared to me. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthians, proving that Jesus is alive, that Jesus did rise from the dead. Not only did he show himself to Peter, not only did he show himself to the 12 apostles, not only did he show himself to 500 other people, and then to James, and then to Paul himself when he knocked him off that horse. He said, wow, Jesus is alive. Some people don't really believe that. But at the time this was written, there was some many, 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 many people that could verify that. So it's true that Jesus is alive. He did rise. He died, but he got up. That is something that no other religion can claim. They can say this person was a prophet, that person was a prophet, this person was a philosopher, this person gave us the scripture, but none of them rose. Jesus rose, and we have proof, we have witness. And so we got people that say, yeah, so what does it do for me? What does the resurrection do for me? So he died, he lived. We prove in history that he lived. We, prove, we have the word written that he, that he died. We, we, we know that the, the Romans crucified people. So it, 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 it aligns with history. He got up. Even if you believe that, what does that mean for you? Because people don't realize there are so many people that should be in church today. There are so many people that should be surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. But they don't recognize. You know how it is when you give somebody something, they don't appreciate it. But if they work for it, you know, they washing it and shining it and polishing it. Yeah, so, so, so. Look, in Romans 5, 24, 25, he was delivered over to death for our sins. And he was raised to life for our justification. People don't understand. The death Whenever there is sin, a death is required. God always required a sacrifice, a sacrificial land, sprinkled the blood on the altar. You have to die. There has to be blood to forgive sins. But he was raised to life for your justification. You know, it's like going to court. You're accused of something, right? You go to court and they're trying to convict you. But they don't have all the evidence to convict you without doubt. They're not saying you didn't do it, because we know you did. You're a sinner. We've all fallen short. We're all sinners. We did it. But they can't prove it, so they have to release you. What Jesus did when he got up, he released us with his blood, but when he got up, he brought proof that we were somewhere else. It wasn't us justified before God. Not only am I not guilty, but I am innocent. That's what this means. He had to get up. He had because if he didn't get up. You would have had somebody else had to die. And next year, somebody else would have had to die. And next year, somebody else would have had to die. But now you're clean. You're justified. You're no longer accused of sin. Here it is. I wanted to show, share this with you. When I was a, I, I don't know that I've ever shared this. And, and that's rare for me. I share, I tell everything. I was, I think I was in the first grade. And there was this girl that bullied me. I don't even think my mom knows about this. I don't think I've ever even told Pastor Rose about this. 
I, I, it reminded me, I went back to first grade. I think she was in second or third, in, in, living in Dallas, Texas. Went to school terrorized by a girl. And it's amazing because I'm trying to avoid her, but whenever she saw me, she would perk up and beeline toward me just to hit me. Bully, what is a bully? Bully is a person who habitually seeks to harm or intimidate those whom they perceive as vulnerable. That's what, that's what a bully does. And so but we, we got bullies out there, and they're trying to intimidate, but we know who the real bully is. There's, there's a bully that's been bullying you, been bullying you and your money, been bullying you and your, your job, been bullying you and your, your, your health, been bullying you and your family, been bullying you and your mind. Because first, first Peter tells us, your enemy, the devil, he prowls around, he's acting like a bully. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's looking for someone. He wants to bully. And some, some among us are being bullied. Some among us today are being bullied by the enemy. But you know what? I had a big brother. I had a big brother, and my brother would rather fight than play. I'm telling you. He read the fight than play. And, 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 and he's good at it. He'll pound your head in the dirt. So I was actually trying to protect people from him by not saying nothing. Was, oh, my God. We have a big brother. Results. You get results that you didn't work for. You get results that you did. Jesus, the, resur the death, burial, and resurrection paid for so much that you don't even realize. Paid for so much that you're not benefiting from. Mainly because you don't know or don't know who you are. Don't know what he's really done. This is why the brother's saying, yeah, so he died. Dude, you don't know what you're forfeiting. Do you know what you're forfeiting? Well, not today. Because when my brother came on the scene, he said, this stops now. When, Jesus, when, when God sent Moses to the Egyptians, they were burdening them. They were beating them. And God said, okay, this stops now. All those plagues, during all those plagues, there was no work being done. The burden was done. The redemption. There's three things I want to share with you today that you have re your, your results that God has given you. These benefits that God has given you. Number one is the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. He redeems you. You know what redemption means? That means that you are a slave. You're on the auction block. And Jesus came and paid for you and took you. And now you're free. He paid for you. He redeemed you. Redeeming means you got to buy. You got to pay for whatever that thing is. You're going to have to pay. And the price was heavy. You're going to have to pay for this. And when G Big Brother came on the scene, enemies, this stops now. You're terrorizing, you're torturing, you're tormenting people. This stops today. I can hear my big brother now say, touch him again. Let me hear any of anybody touch my brother again and see what happened. You know, that ended that day. Here it is in Ephesians 1, 7. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Why? Because sin gives, gives, gives power to the law. And the law says the wages of sin is death. The way, so the devil had access to you because sin is on you. The devil has access to you because sin is on you, in you, through you. But Jesus said, I paid the price. Now you have no right to touch him again. As a matter of fact, get out of here. Somebody say, shut down. Shut down. Somebody say, beat down. Beat down. Somebody say, get out of town. Because <laughs> that's what Jesus did. He shut him down. He beat him down. Then he said, get out of town. Because this is what 
in, in, in Colossians 2.15, it says he defeated the rulers and powers of the spiritual world. He defeated them. With the cross, he won the victory over them and led them away as defeated. Somebody say defeated. defeated. And powerless. Say powerless. powerless. I'm going to make you say some stuff today because I want to get in your spirit. You know why? Because all the gates, we're trying to, we're trying to get the heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Lord says, cover your gates, guard your gates, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. You need to see, you need to hear, and you need to say. So you can know what your rights are. So you can get power over the thing that's tormenting you, that's bullying you. Jesus came, beaten, spat on, thorned, and crucified. So you didn't have to put up with that no more. But you're still dealing with it because you don't have this revelation. This is not just an Easter Sunday. This is not, this is not just a, another day. This is a commemoration of what we've been given, results that we didn't even have to pay for. So he beat him down. Said, then he said, get out of town. Redemption shuts down the enemy. The enemy beats down. He's powerless in your life. And the enemy is, when Jesus casted out those demons, that legion of demons, what did they say? He said, what is your name? They answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly, the demons begged him earnestly, please do not send us out of the country. Jesus gave them permission. See, my brother showed up on the scene and said, from now on, when you see him, be running in the next direction. Be running in the other direction. Every time you see him, take off running. Because if I see you within 50 feet of him, you better be giving him a pedicure. Oh, it's on. Get out. You're barred from my presence. The enemy has no right in your house. The enemy has no right in your body. The enemy has no right in your pocket. The enemy has no right. Jesus paid the price. You're blessed of God now. You're, you're healed of God. You're delivered now. He gave the enemy permission to go into some pigs. Go into the pigs. You can go into the pigs. Jesus showed up on the scene and like, the big brother, this is over. And, and, and he was able to do it. But he paid the price for us to be able to get these benefits get these benefits because he rose. We're justified now. All right. So that's redemption. Come on, somebody say reconciliation. Reconciliation because we still got these bullies. They heard that you told your big brother and now they mad at you and they catch you and they trying to silence you. They trying to intimidate you. What is he trying to do? This bully is repetitive, intentional hurting of a person, where the relationships involves an imbalance of power. So they bigger, they stronger, they meaner, and they got a crew. And they, and, they, and they bullying you, and they trying to intimidate you to try to make, the devil don't want you to open your mouth. Because that's where the power is. The power is the word of God. God created us a living spirit, different from every other living thing. We have the ability to speak. He said, whatsoever you say, that's what it's going to be. Adam, whatsoever you call it, that's what it's going to be. If you only knew the word of God when that thing came up in your life, you can speak that thing. You can decree a thing and it'll be established. So your life currently is the sum total of the last five years of what's been coming out of your mouth. Have they been goals? Have they been, have they been words of God? Have they been words of, 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 what did the Bible say? Think on these things. Anything that is good, report. Anything that is prosperous, anything that is wonderful, anything that is lovely, think on these things. Because when you put that in your heart, that's what comes out of your heart. And the enemy can't stand a faithful, somebody that believes the word of God. Here in reconciliation, we, we've reconciled, number one, to his presence. Because he don't want you to go to God. He don't want you to say nothing to God. He don't want you. And there was a time where we couldn't go to God. Only could go to the priest. 
and the priest could go to God. There was a veil between the holy and the most holy place. We would enter in and die immediately. But now what does he tell us? He said, let us therefore come boldly. Come boldly. There was a time where you came to the presence of God and you would die instantly. But now he's telling us because Christ have died and Christ rose, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Mercy. You know what mercy is? Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. And find grace. You know what grace is? Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. So I'm going to go boldly into his presence and he's going to not give me what I deserve, which is a beating. And I'm going to find grace, which is favor, unmerited favor, giving me what I don't deserve. Blessings, peace to help me in time of need. So when the bully comes and that thing come up on you and that thing comes to your house and that thing come on your kid, come boldly before the throne of grace and God's going to make sure you're clean so that he can qualify you for this blessing. Good God. He's a good God. It says here in Romans 8, 15 and 16, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage. When I pay for you, I'm not putting, I'm not making you a slave again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, I can identify with that too because I was adopted. We can now come as a child. We can come not as a servant, not as somebody afraid. You can go into your, your daddy's house and sit on his lap. You can come boldly and he's loving you. He's accepted you. Jesus said to call him father. Jesus calls him father and he tells us to call him father. He's our father. We have access to his presence because we're in the family. We're this holy priesthood, this royal priesthood, this holy nation because of what Christ has done. Come on, somebody say his power. I've been reconciled to his power, his power. Say his power, his power. His power. Are you walking on empty? You have power. If you're, if you're a child of God, you have power. In John 16, 7, it says, it is for your good that I am going away. Jesus said, I have to die. I have to die. And I have to get up from death because unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. So he already knows he's got to die. I got to let these people spit on me. I got to let these people beat me. And he's making it nice. If I go away, do you know what go away means? He knows what goes away means. Go away mean they're going to spit on me. They're going to beat me. They're going to flog me. They're going to thorn me. They're going to spear my side. They're going to... They they don't, they're going to crucify me. They're going to put nails in my hands and my feet. I'm going to be a public display, display, shameful. They're going to strip me of my clothes. If I go away, this is how much he loves you. He don't even want you to know how hard it's going to be. If I go, because they didn't want him to go. He said, I have to go because I'm trying to get something to you. The only way I can get this thing to you is if I drink this cup. I drink this cup. And then I'm going to get up three days later, and then I'm going to go to heaven, and then I'm going to send this power. Acts 1-8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I'm going to send this power. And the day of Pentecost came, and this power came down. You will receive power. You need to use your power. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so you can use your power. So now that your voice, your words, when you say them, you speak a thing, the enemy has to be arrested. When you show up, he starts running in a different direction because he knows Jesus is there. He knows the Holy Spirit is there. Yes, because that's what they did. Whenever Jesus came, they like, Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing here? What do you, what'd I have to do with you? You didn't come here to torment me, did you? 
that's how they're supposed to act when you roll up. Because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. And your words have power because of what Jesus has paid for. And his peace. Come on, say his peace. peace. You need some peace. I know you do. You need some peace. Did you sleep well last night? You weren't tipsy, were you? (laughs) His peace. Oh. Peace, peace, peace is expensive. Peace is Peace is expensive. Peace is also a weapon. When the enemy comes in like a flood, if you can just stand there with a smile, peace. You know, it takes two to argue. It takes two. So you have to display a peace. My wife said it. She said something this morning. She got a revelation <laughs> that, um, that you, regardless of how the other person gets, You can't change the other person. You have to change you. Never change the other person. Just change you. And how you respond when they get there. So, yeah, this this drama's coming. But are you going to combat drama with drama? Or are you just going to maintain and hold your peace? Smiling. They're going to think, you crazy. you just like... This is the pieces. It's all the pieces I can muster. <laughs> There's all the pieces. Just keeping them in. But you got to start where you got to start. And if that's where you're at, just keep those lips together. Wow. Hebrews 13, 5 said, God said, he said, never will I leave you. And never will I forsake you. Never. I don't care what's going on. He's there. And if he's there, then I'm cool. He he can see all, he can hear all, and he knows all. And here's the kicker. He's all powerful. He ain't never left. Never left. Wow. I'm staying on peace for a minute because somebody needs some peace. He's with you. It may seem like he ain't, and people use the phrase God forsaken. He's with you. He's with you. He's never going to leave you. Even if you do the worst thing imaginable. You know what never means? No matter what you do, you feel like you don't deserve him to be with you sometimes. But he's with you and ain't never going to leave, waiting for you just to turn waiting for you to listen, waiting for you to to come boldly. He's right there with you. So we can can put on this peace like a garment. John 16, 33 said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, yeah, you're going to have trouble. Things are going to come. Don't think it's strange that people crazy. Don't think it's strange that people lose their temper. Don't think it's strange that you get a bad report. Don't think it's strange that they want to take the call. Don't think it's strange. Things happen. But I want you to maintain your peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. He has overcome it. No matter what it is, God is bigger than that. No matter what it is, he's overcome that thing. There's something going on here that you might not know about, that he wants you to know about that he's trying to get you to. If you just hang on, just stay right there. I'm getting ready to reveal something. If you can be at peace, if you can be cool and just let, let that thing work out. There's something in that other person that needs to be worked out because they ain't never seen nobody act like you. They, they ain't never encountered anybody that is cool as you are. This is the witness I'm trying to use to get them to the place I want them. So hold your peace. You ain't going to be a punk. Ain't nobody consider you a punk. Just hold your peace. See, meekness is not weakness. Just meek. Romans 8, 28 says, we know that in all things, this is why you can hold your peace. Somebody say, all things. things. Everything that you deal with, everything that you're going through, every report, every finance, every physical, every relational, every, all works for the good. 
for those who love him. So if you're in the fold and you love him, I don't care what you're experiencing. It's going to turn out good. Some way, form, or fashion. God is in control. And here's the, here it is, the dim, the, the, what do you call it? Grim de la grim. Isaiah 54, 16, 17, Behold, myself have created the smith who blows on the fire of coal and produces a weapon for its work. And I have created the destroyer to inflict ruin. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you will succeed. Why does he say that? He said, the person that's blowing on the coals to light the fire, I put the breath in his lungs. The skill that he has in making that sword or that weapon or that gun or that knife, I put that skill in him. I created. I created. And he said, and I have created the destroyer. Somebody you don't even know. That guy I sent to Egypt that night and just one angel. One death angel. I created him. So all weapons, anything that kills, steals, or destroys, I created it. You don't have to worry about none of that. I don't care what's coming against you. No weapon. I'm, I'm the weapon. See, when your big brother, big brother showed up, there, there is no competition. Don't nobody want that heat. Nobody want none of that heat. When Jesus showed up, they are trembling because they know. They lucky he meek. They lucky he nice. I, when I pray, when I come against the enemy, I like sending them to the, 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 the bottomless pit. I send them to the abyss. Yeah, I want y'all to be scared of me because I don't have no mercy. I ain't Jesus. He lived in me, but touch me and mine, you're going down. I'm sending you, I'm sending you to the hole that don't have no bottom. No weapon. When you, when you see me coming, go the other way, please. Go, go run. Run. Because, yes, that's just what it is. I'm, I'm mad at the devil because there's just too much wrong that has happened to, to me and mine. So he said, I created all of this, man. You ain't got to worry about nothing and nobody. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how terrible it seems. I don't care. I'm, I created everything. I'm in charge. I run the universe. I gave the stars names. I, I hold the lightning in my hand. I, I stored up the hail that falls where I tell it to fall. Everything else is fronting. Everything else is fake. Everything else is bluffing. Everything else is a smoke screen. It ain't even real. And you're being deceived. You're, being, you're, being, you, 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 you're allowing that emotion to come up and take away your peace. Yes. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all. See, they can't understand how you could be at peace during this time. Shall keep your hearts and minds. How? Through the one who was died, the one who raised, the one who got up, the one who ascended. Through him. See, you know, when there is peace, Jesus is in, in, the, in the picture. If there ain't no peace, Jesus ain't on the, he's, in, he's not, He's not on the throne of your heart. And here's the bully again. Because here now, he's taking the lunch money. He t- intimidates through threats. See, j- the enemy wants to take your resources. He wants to take your energy. He wants to take your money. He wants to take your health. And he's just bullying it, just taking it. Give it to me. Dude, you have no right. You, just because you think you're stronger, he insults or, or aggressive behavior to intentionally abuse or harass. upsets me that the enemy is just running rampant in so many lives. You know, some people say, you need to be an evangelist. I'm like, I am an evangelist. I'm an evangelist in the house. In the house. There are so many people that go to church that need to be saved. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an evangelist to the Christian. People come to church but still don't know who they are, still haven't accepted Christ fully, really. They just church goers. There's an evangelistic field right inside the church. Wow. Somebody say restoration. Yeah, that's what he bought you. He bought you restoration. He bought you redemption. He bought you reconciliation. Now he bought you your your restoration. 
man, your fortune, your, your family, and your future. Your fortune, your family, and your future. He paid for it. He paid for it. The enemy's killing, stealing, and destroying. I remember we went to San Francisco, and we went out to dinner, and, 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 and we was at a, a, a supernatural conference, and we went out to dinner with a, a, an angel of God, a man of God, and was ministering to everybody. He was reading their mail. Everybody wanted to come in. He said, like, dude, you, you, you supposed to be in school. Why come you ain't go to school? He's like, man, I had to quit school because I had to take this job. Because of God said, go back to school. And he was just doing it all day long, just, 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 whoosh. He see somebody and see everything about them. And we enjoying him. We're learning. We're, we're, we're praising God. We're eating good food. Go back out to the parking lot. And our rental car windows are smashed. And all our stuff was taken. And we said, we want our stuff back. We were just at a supernatural conference that day. And the prophet, Bill Johnson, was saying, that, you know, the devil tries to kill, steal, and destroy, but nothing is lost in the kingdom. You need to start opening your mouth and say, I want my stuff back. Amen. And we went out there and was like, man, we had diamonds and laptops and jewelry and everything, money in that car. And the dude just, somebody took it. And we don't know when he took it, so we just called the police. We was cleaning glass out the seat, and we're like, dang, I didn't get that rental insurance. <laughs> it didn't matter. They didn't charge me favor. It's like, don't worry about it. This happens all the time in California. I said, what? Not to me. So we said, I want my stuff back by faith. Called the police. They went. They, said, they told us. They said, you know, it's... Highly unlikely that you'll get your stuff back. You know, we don't know when the person did it. We don't know who they are. We don't know what happened. We don't blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, 17 minutes later, we get a call. Say, we found your stuff. Say, that's a miracle. We was on the, the, the news in Sacramento. They put us on the news in Sacramento. It's like, this never happens. They put us on, the, the police station put us on their Facebook page. With pictures of us, we gave them books. Say, here's books from the con. We was, we was ministering to the police officers. And they said, well, let's take a picture. They was like, wow, this is amazing, because we told them the testimony. They was driving on the highway somewhere on one of the main highways in, in, from San Francisco to Sacramento, and they saw a tag. that They said, let's check that tag out. That don't look right. It's a Mercedes, too. Pulled the guy over and said, hey, you know, and said, you don't mind if we check the car, do you? He said, no, I don't mind. Pass Rose's bag. They opened a the laptop and it said, when the screensaver came, it said, Rosetta Porter. They're like, didn't we just get a call? <laughs> said, wow. Brought our stuff back. They told us to come maybe five miles away. We went down there and, and verified the stuff and looked at the guy. Did you give him permission to take your stuff? I said, no. <laughs> you know we didn't. The window broke. <laughs> I want my stuff back. Nothing in the kingdom is lost. Everything you sow, everything that's been stolen from you, the enemy owes you. What does the Bible say in Proverbs 30 and 31? People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he's hungry. But when he is found, he must repay seven times what he stole. So there's some stuff, there's some stuff from your lineage that the devil stole from your great, 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 great grandfathers that belongs to you. And you didn't get that inheritance and they didn't multiply and you didn't get that inheritance and you sitting here struggling because you didn't get nothing. Because the devil stole it long years ago to put you in the situation you in and he's stealing from you still today. Do you know how much he owes you? No, there's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking. There's nothing broken in the kingdom of God. He owes you. John 10 said the thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. But what did Jesus come for? He said, I came that they might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Anybody overflowing out there? 
Come on, raise your hand if you're overflowing. You overflow. Come on, you raise, raise your hand. Overflow. We got we got two percent, two percent, three three. Uh, at least at least fake it till you make it. Say, just confess it. Say, I'm in the overflow. Say it. I'm in the overflow. Yes, the Lord. That's what the, that's what the death, burial, and resurrection paid for. That Jesus could give you overflow, abundance, your fortune, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. See, the enemy, these are all signs of the enemy. This is all part of sin. See, now Jesus has taken sin away. Even though we still live in a sin world, we're no longer under the curse that God gave Adam and Eve. You're no longer under that curse. The land give thorns and thistles and it'll be hard and you don't have to wait by the sweat of your brow. No, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's going to be sweatless. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. All right, now your family. What did it say in Matthew 19? Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. In the name of Jesus, receive that. So you as a Christian, you can't put your family before God. You have to let that sink in. You can't put your child before God. You love your child. You love your mama. You love your brother. You love your sister. You love your spouse. You know he didn't say spouse? Because y'all won. You can't, you, can't, you can't forsake your spouse. But everybody else, if it requires your relationship to be fractured, because you serve God, so be it. I have, there are so many people that forsake God, forsake serving God, sake living for God, because they, their whole mission in life is to save everybody, save their kids or save their whatever. No, do what you're supposed to do, and God will take care of that. He said you will receive. Let's, let's read this one. In Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and your household. The key word is there is believe. You can't have faith without works. And we can tell what you believe by what you do. So if you're chasing them to try, no, stop that. I got to help them. I can't come to you. I can't do it. I can't serve the Lord. I got to take care of these. Well, then you don't believe. So all that you're doing is for naught. Because you have forsaken the only one that can help. Just release. Say, Lord, he said, cast your cares. Release. Lord, I believe. You said that you will save my household. So I, I release them. I believe. I can't stop, drop, and roll every time they sneeze. And your future. Finally, you'll be restored. Because somebody, some, we pray that our future is going up. What did he say in, 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 in Jeremiah 29, 11? Said that, uh, I know the plans that I have for you. Not plans to harm you, but plans to help you, to, help, to give you hope and the future. Plans to be a blessing to you. I have plans for you. You got plans for you that ain't going to work. But I have plans for you. I created you. I know who you are. I know your purpose. I know your temperament. I know your DNA. I know your personality. I, know, I put you together fearfully and wonderfully, perfectly, specifically. So I have plans for you. I know what they are. But you have to surrender. You have to surrender because your future is at stake. The enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying, to, he's trying to get this highway to go downward. John 10, 27, 28 said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give unto them eternal life. This is the only thing that matters. I try to help people to understand that. This life is what, 80, 90, 100 years if you're lucky? The only thing that matters is eternity. That's that's it. Ain't nothing worth that. 
nothing and nobody. Because when you transition, you're going to get the reality check. Hopefully you're on the right side of that thing and it's going up. It's a reality. Eternity is the only thing that matters. Only. Only. Your whole life is, is, supposed, to be, is supposed to be preparing for that. Your whole life, it needs to be filtered through that. And he said, they will never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Here it is, Matthew. And so you're like, that's eternity, but what about now? And he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first. Somebody say, seek first. Seek first. There's, a, there's a primary thing. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be given. You're working for stuff that God want to give you. Hmm. you, you, you you're working for stuff that God wants to give you. Because you worry. The reason you working so hard and the reason you so had no peace because you worried. But all we got to do is put him first and have peace because he's never leaving nor forsaking me. And then all this stuff just comes. It just comes to you. Wow. Results you didn't work for because he got up. Jesus came. He died. He rose again and went to the Father so that you could be saved, so you could be blessed, so you could have eternal life. He gave it because he wanted to redeem you. You had a bully in your life. Some of you still do. You still have a bully in your life, and you don't even realize it. You're just, you just accustomed to it. You know, you got to do 15 things to get that car to start. You're used to it, but you can't let nobody else drive it because they don't know all them tricks. He redeemed you. He shut the enemy down. The enemy isn't supposed to have no power over you in your life. He beat the enemy down. He's powerless. He's, they say the king, whenever a king conquered another king, they beat him down and, and they put him in chains and they drug him back. Before killing him, they drug him back, bucket naked in front of the whole town. Here's the king. And then they cut his head off and put his body on a stick on the wall beat down, and then he kicked him out of your life forever. Why you keep letting him back in? He's supposed to run when he see you. But we got to build our faith. We got to be around people with faith. We got to give our lives to Christ. We got to put him first because he's always there. You ain't never got to be worried about anything. He's also reconciled us. We can go to God at any time. God is waiting for you. Why don't we ask God? We do everything else first. Except go to him. He knows the answer. He knows the specifics. He knows what's going on in their head. They head and they head. And he'll tell you exactly what to do. He'll give you this, this power that you need. Because when the enemy comes, you need to be able to speak and decree and declare and cast out. You can't be in my house, devil. You can't, be, you can't be in my body. You can't be in my money. You can't be in my children. You can't be in my spouse. I'm holding my peace, but I'm praying the powerful prayer. The fervent and effective prayer avails much. That's how you have peace. That's how you get peace, because you know God is with you. You know he's the most biggest and powerfulest. He's badder and baddest. So what am I afraid of? I ain't no weapon formed against me prospers. So I'm going to maintain my peace. You could be yelling at me six inches from my face at the top of your lungs. I'm just going to be smiling. You know that's God. That ain't used to be that way. But God, that's what he wants for us. That's what Jesus did when he took the licks and the spit. And then, and then pray for us. Lord, they don't know what they're doing. I want you to pray for those people that's doing that against you. Because you see that the enemy got them entangled. The enemy got them ugh, wrapped up and tied up. They don't know. That's what Jesus saw. So they don't even know what they're doing. The devil using them like a puppet. They can't help it. So come against that thing. Speak against that thing. Cast out that thing. Recant that thing. Don't be agreeing with the devil. See, you ain't got no sense. 
and they, they, sense, they lose a little more sense every time you say it. And then redemption. Is that redemption? That's supposed to be re restoration. Restoration. He's going to restore your fortune. He's going to restore your family. He's going to restore your future. That's what we want. Our future, mainly eternity. Because we don't care nothing about anything that's in this world. We're not stuck to anything. I'm not clinging to anything. God can have everything. I don't care about anything in this world. Nothing is going to come between me and God. If, if all things work together for the good and they want all my stuff, then it's going to work together for the good in this life or the next. But I'm maintaining my peace because I know what my future holds and I know who holds my future. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Today is a day. Today is actually Pastor Rose and my salvation anniversary. We got saved 30, how many is it now? 33 years ago on Easter Sunday. Yes, come on, give God a hand clap of praise for y'all pastors being saved. Y'all pastors have been serving God for 33 years. Some of y'all ain't 33. <laughs> <laughs> 33 years it's a perfect day to give your life to Christ he did everything for you he's trying to get all these blessings to you trying to get you this power today you, you, would, you would join you would be on the same anniversary as us if you came not that that's a, a selling point so <laughs> these are the results God is trying to get you benefits that God is trying to get you the enemy will run from you. If you come up under this umbrella of God, the enemy has to run in a different direction, especially when you're a new Christian, when you're, when you're a first grader and a second grader and a third grader. Oh, yeah, your big brother's there. And God will cover you, and as he teaches you how, he teaches you your language. He teaches you the language of the kingdom. He teaches you the spirit of the kingdom, the personality and of the kingdom. That's what he wants. But in the meantime, you will be blessed. God will cover you. He answers the prayers. We take care of our little ones. So if you're, if you're here today, or online as well, if you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, that's, please come forth now. Come on, give her a hand as she comes. Give her, <laughs> yes. We want people to to rededicate. If you, if you want to rededicate, you know, you might, you might be saved, but you're like, you know what, I need to rededicate my life to Christ. I haven't been where I should be. I haven't been doing what I should have been doing. I haven't had the prayer life. I haven't had the, 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 the church schedule. I haven't been coming to, I just haven't had no devotion. I just want to rededicate my life to Christ. This is a perfect day for that. Anybody that wants to come and get rededication. You know what, um, Minister Jeannie, I want my, I, I got some brand new oil, came from Israel. Yes, it's in my office on my, on my, on my shelf behind my chair. I, I want to, I, I really want to anoint everybody in here, but I'm not going to make everybody do that. But those who are willing, what I want to do is put the sign of our big brother on you. I'm not going to belabor this. I'm not going to do no long prayer. I'm just going to just say a, one prayer, and then I'm going to put this, this cross on you with this new oil. It's, it's never been used. I just got it this week from Israel. Um, and so I believe that it's going to be a blessing. I believe that it's going to be a sign. I believe that it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... In, in, in the Hebrew, in the, in, the, in the Jewish community, this is the new year. Next month, this is the new year. Nisan, next month. Starting tomorrow is a new year. Their year is tomorrow. So you're going into a, a spiritually, a new year starts tomorrow. There it is. Right here. Never used. It has on here frankincense and myrrh. I'm believing we're going to go into this new spiritual year starting tomorrow of the blessings of God, that the enemy is going to leave your house, that the enemy is going to leave your body, 
But the enemy is going to leave your family. The enemy is going to leave your finances. I'm praying this over everybody, but I believe that this oil coming from, as I decree and declare, as the authority of this house, I can decree these blessings on you. That's why we always say a blessing over you before we benedict. I'm believing God for you. I've been praying for you all week. This has been a holy week. I'm believing God for a turnaround in your life. I'm believing God for you to see signs, wonders, and miracles. All right, so anybody that wants to come up, I'm going to be ready to start anointing. I just want to touch this young lady first before I... Beautiful. Perfect, perfect. Welcome, woman of God. We welcome you. Thank you for hearing God. He's got a blessing in store for you. Yes, God bless you. You want to, you want to, you know what? Some of us also have some stuff, right, that you want back. The devil stole. Come on, everybody, just say this. Say, I want my stuff back. Yes, Father, you heard that. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving everybody. Nothing in the kingdom is lost. So I thank you, Lord God, that everyone that receives this anointing today, Father God, will be restored in every area of their lives. I pray, Father God, that this anointing oil is like the, the blood on top of the doorpost at Egypt. The death angel passes over them, Father God. They are saved from this day forward. This is a, a new day, Father God, in their lives. As tomorrow starts a new year, a new season in their lives. And so I speak your blessings on their lives. I speak your favor on their lives. I speak yes. big brother to come and yes. beat down, shut down, and yes. kick yes. the enemy out of their lives. For in your face to shine upon them, be gracious unto them, yes. answer all the yes. desires of their hearts, Father. Yes. Always protect them. Always keep them. Always make your face to shine. I'm going to go down here and get them. We speak these blessings on them, Father. Thank you for blessing. Thank you, Lord. Come here. There you go. AK2. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you can stand up. Stand up. There you go. He is such a beautiful. God bless you. Keep you. God protect you. God's way. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. There's no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. He loves you. He said, let the little children come in Jesus' name. And they clean, too. You look good. <laughs> come on, get your hands. Give God a hand clap of praise for the beautiful kids. Awesome.